Vooch tied Ayo Dosumu as a game high plus 20, dropping a cool 17 points on 8 for 11 shooting, including the dagger down the stretch against my hometown Raptors who fought hard. Toronto was without Fred Van Vliet and dropped back to 500, with everyone seeming panicked in the final minutes as no one could hit a shot. Conversely, Chicago was simply the more calm, cool, and collected team down the stretch, knocking down free throws and timely jumpers when it mattered most. This video breaks down the stunning development of Zach Levine in year 8, and then looks at how the Bulls' shockingly impactful role players, combined with the Big Three, took care of business against the Raps. The Windy City's injury troubles may be severely affecting the team, with two top backcourt stoppers in Caruso and Lonzo out for another month and a half, but stay tuned to see how the Chicago Bulls' beastly attack is still getting it done. Right quick, only 12.1% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for those two platforms. Witnessing the steady, annual development in Zach Levine's game is one of many reasons why I'm thankful to have been a loyal follower and now analyst of the NBA. Zach entered the league back in 2014 with the Minnesota Timberwolves as an extremely raw, skinny 19-year-old kid, but after refining his game and putting in the extra reps, Zach steadily improved every aspect to his game, morphing into the polished, bulky, and mentally tough player he is to this day in 2022. A 2016-17 ACL tear in Minneapolis shockingly didn't stunt Zach's progression, as after getting traded with Chris Dunn and Lori Markkinen from Minnesota to Chicago in exchange for Jimmy Butler and a 2017 first round pick, the soon to be two time All Star and All Rookie first team player in Levine was about to go from your typical 15 to 18 point contributing fringe star to a perennial 20 point per game score. Levine's bucket getting prowess has escalated to the point where the 2021 22 campaign is now the fourth consecutive NBA season of him putting up at least 23 points per game. Levine's also become one of the most efficient shot manufacturers in all of basketball, especially at his position. Among shooting guards, Levine ranks directly next to Debo in field goal percentage as the sixth most efficient player at the two guard spot. Also, considering the degree of difficulty in Levine's attempts with a big chunk of them coming from deep range, that just makes shooting nearly 50% from the field even more eye-popping. For those who tried to label what the former dunk champion was accomplishing as quote-unquote empty stats and questioning whether or not Levine could play under the concept of a winning ball club, those doubters have been proved stone-cold dead wrong. With the adequate supporting cast around him for the first time in his eight-year career, Levine had his bulls at the top of the conference for the entire season until suffering a scary knee injury as well as soreness in the same knee in which he tore his ACL Chicago would proceed to lose seven of their next nine games until Zach's return in Oklahoma on January 24th, and they've won two straight since then. If you needed a factual response to those still arguing that Levine's nightly 25.5 assist averages are merely inflated numbers, you can mention the fact that Chicago's below 500 without Zach, while in the 40 games he's played, they have an Eastern Conference best 67.5 winning percentage, Combining Zach's smooth, multifaceted shot creating prowess with Debo and Vooch, and opposing defenses have all they can handle. But as we'll look at later, the powerful weapons in Chi Town's attack don't stop after the big three. Speaking of the Bulls trio versus the Raptors on Wednesday night, Nikola Vucevic, DeMar DeRozan, and Zach Levine were zoned in during the opening half, combining to drop 45 points. They made a stellar 19 of their 27 attempts from the field and the Bulls jumped out to a 67-50 lead entering the locker room. In the one game played between Chicago and Toronto before last night this season back on October 25th, the Bulls went up by as many as 20 points in quarter number three, nearly blew that lead by taking their foot off the gas pedal before willing out a hard-fought W. If that outcome sounds familiar, it's because it's about exactly what happened on Wednesday. Based off the heated games we're seeing, we badly need to see the Raps and the Bulls matched up in the first round of the playoffs. Again, this was an unpredictably thrilling game, with Chi-Town dominating the first half, leading by as many as 19 points in the third frame. But the feisty group of talented youngins from north of the border weren't about to just lay over and give in though, and the Raps prove their defense can be damn effective when they're locked in. 
Toronto significantly increased their on-ball pressure and were also fueled by fiery deep-range shooting and a parade at the charity stripe, but identically to these two teams' first meeting in late October, Chi-Town did just enough to pull out the win, as this time, it was the severely criticized Nikola Vucevic hitting a dagger three-pointer to seal the 111-105 triumph. Bulls fans know exactly how certain members of their fan base can unfairly make Vucevic the scapegoat, but as I've mentioned before, Nick's an elite rebounder and defensive player, no matter how efficient he is. Man also spaces out the entire offense. We'll see if Vooch can stay consistent shooting the ball offensively, but I'm always going to be rocking with this man for what he does on the back end and on the glass. He also plays with a ton of heart, as we saw with his clutch shot last night. Given Nikola was the one who really had the Bulls humming offensively in the early going, it just seemed appropriate that Vooch was the man who finished off the game. The stretch big was on triple double watch with 6, 5, and 4 in the opening quarter, and the former two-time All-Star finished the game with 17, 15, and 8 while shooting 8 of 11 from the fields and 1 of 2 from three-point range. For Toronto, Gary Trent Jr. caught fire early as well to kickstart a 32-point night that saw him get questionably ejected in crunch time. While the Raptors came out swinging in the start of the second quarter, Chicago's starters would check in and turn on the Jets to close the half, the Bulls still led by 18, about five minutes into the third quarter. But Nick Nurse then started trapping, leading the Raptors to a 13-0 run, transforming the 18-point Bulls lead into a five-point margin. Having said that, like a top-seeded team often does, Chicago closed the quarter out very well, stemming Toronto's tide, and ultimately led by nine entering the final frame. DeRozan picked up two technical fouls in the third quarter, but he wasn't ejected because the first tech was for grabbing the net while trying to block a shot. Like the previous frame, the fourth quarter wasn't pretty for the most part. Toronto's length and athleticism continued to be extremely bothersome for Chicago's attacking players. Toronto just kept chipping away before finally taking its first lead of the game with 3-11 left on an OG Ananobi dunk. I was hyped up at this point. But looking back on this game from an angry Raptor fan's perspective, if you can't close it out down the stretch, the comeback meant nothing at all. In the dying minutes, Chicago's big three was more than up to the task while the Raps folded. Levine responded with an and one, and not too long after that was when Gary Trent Jr. picked up his second technical foul and got ejected for clapping in the face of an official. Gary felt he should have received an and one call on a basket that made it 107-105 with just over two minutes left. My raps had gotten a favorable whistle all night, I can't complain about that, and even though Io seemed to have made contact, Toronto shot 28 free throws to just 16 for Chicago, but the young visitors in my raps made just 17 of those freebies. I thought Troy Brown Jr. played some excellent defense on Siakam down the stretch, holding Toronto's former All-Star to just 3 of 12 from the field. Pascal had been shooting much better before that, but my boy Spicy P did still rack up seven dimes, seven boards, and three steals. But the former Wizards draft pick, Brown Jr., contested Pascal perfectly whenever he was matched up against him, and Troy's physicality and length clearly bothered Siakam all throughout this one. TBJ is one of Chicago's biggest unsung heroes, but man deserves some credit for locking down wing players whenever Billy Donovan calls upon him. For the 16 minutes on average, he's gotten over 35 games played in 2021-22. Starting power forward Javante Green's return to the lineup has of course been the less talked about return between he and Levine, but last night against Toronto, Javante gave Billy Donovan an exceptional 24 minutes consisting of energy along with key offensive rebounds and polished finishes around the bucket. Javante made six of his nine field goal attempts, grabbed the team third best six boards, and was the only Bulls player other than Dosumu who committed zero turnovers while playing at least 24 minutes. Javante's explosive, tough to hold down activity also led him to be a productive plus six on the game. My video on Ayo Dosumu is in the works, but as you can see, the powerful weapons amongst Chi Town's lethal two way firepower consist of far from merely the big three. There's suitable, versatile role players 1 through 15 who make an impact in unique ways in which conveniently fill the team's biggest weaknesses. If the Bulls arguably lack one trait, it's hard-nosed defense, and while I believe Levine and Vucevic are very underrated on that end, it's nice to have elite guys at their position like Javante and TBJ to lock down one of the deepest positions in the modern NBA on the wing. 
With Lonzo and Caruso both on the court, the Bulls defense is allowing an NBA third best 105.4 points per 100 possessions. Meanwhile, with Lonzo and Caruso both off the court, they're allowing a league worst by far 119.2 points per 100 possessions. As I spoke about in this Bulls video, which you can watch right now, the reinforcements that Chicago just got could give them just enough to somewhat make up for Lonzo and Caruso's absence, but can the Bulls sustain winning basketball without Zoe and Caruso? Best answer in the comments earns next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Ona Ebodaga, who says ever since Steph broke the all-time three-pointers made record, his shooting efficiency has taken a major hit from both the field and from three. I believe that he'll break out of his shooting slump when Clay's legs have gotten used to playing substantial NBA basketball and the DPOY Draymond Green returns from injury. Pause to read the rest of Ona's answer. I hope you have a great one. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.